Over the course of the last three videos, we've explored the basic structure, three structural levels of organization, of a polypeptide. The primary structure that was that polypeptide's unique amino acid sequence. The secondary structure, the folding associated with hydrogen bonding involved with the backbone of the protein into shapes like the alpha helix and the beta sheet and the tertiary structure folding into the final conformation of the polypeptide related to things like hydrogen bonds, hydrophobic exclusions, ionic and covalent bonds involving the actual side chains of the amino acids present. The watchword for all of this has been folding, folding, folding. We fold the polypeptide into its final shape that determines the protein's function. Again, I mentioned at the end of the last video that most proteins don't consist of a single polypeptide, they consist of multiple polypeptides. And so the quaternary structure of the protein is going to involve joining multiple polypeptides to each other, and side chain interactions are what are going to drive this. So here's our sample tertiary structure from the last video. And this tertiary structure, we can simplify it a little bit in creating this more globular shape. If you notice the little blob shape I've drawn around it, this is to make it easier to talk about the quaternary structure. So that blue blob now represents the protein we've been looking at, which in fact hasn't been just a generic protein. It's been part of a very important protein called hemoglobin. And specifically, we've been looking at the structure of what's called beta hemoglobin. Actual hemoglobin molecules found in red blood cells and used to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide around the human body Actual hemoglobin consists of four polypeptide chains, two beta hemoglobin subunits, and two additional subunits of what's called alpha hemoglobin. Notice alpha hemoglobin has a slightly different shape, globular shape, than beta hemoglobin. To form the final hemoglobin molecule, these four are joined to each other, and they form what's called a globular protein, because it's sort of a blobby or glob-shaped. The two main shapes we typically talk about for quaternary structure proteins is globular proteins or filamentous or uh, fibrous proteins. Collagen would be an example of a fibrous protein because it looks like an extended thread, whereas hemoglobin is a good example of a globular protein. The quaternary structure of any protein is held together by the same forces, the same chemical interactions that held together the tertiary structure. The only difference between quaternary and tertiary structure is that instead of the side chains forming hydrogen bonds, hydrophobic exclusion interactions, ionic or covalent bonds within the polypeptide, they're forming those same interactions between two polypeptides to join them into this functional composite molecule we call the protein. So the product of quaternary structure is the functional protein. In order for a protein to do its job, it's critical that it have the proper conformation. So any manipulations or changes to protein shape at any of the four levels will lead to changes in protein function. Video 9 will explore why protein shape can matter so much by exploring a specific example. And then video 10 is going to go into a specific category of proteins to talk a little bit about how shape relates to function in the case of those catalytic proteins we call enzymes.